on the original sports podcast. Gentlemen, what's <laughs> happening with you? It is sizzling, and I don't mean tea sizzling. I mean it is sizzling, freaking hot out. Yes, I, I mean it's it's incredible to me. I'm very uh, what's what's going on with with the weather. I mean I don't care. I like the heat. I like the heat a, a hell of a lot better than I like uh, the cold. But you know everybody's a little different, right? Everybody's a little like, different. I'm a fall baby. Okay. Fall baby. You're yes, a fall, fall guy. I like fall. Fall guy. There you go. Fall guy. You're the fall yes. guy. Hey, uh, fellas, who it? likes to hit the links out there? Anybody here? I know T Sizzle does. Um, I, no, I like not to those go links. But... Like, I, I am just <laughs> god awful. Uh, when I when I hit a great shot, I say, you know, it's me. When I hit a bad one, it's the course for my club, like everybody else. Uh, when I blow a shot, which are a lot of them. I put, I just put my fingers in the air and do this. Okay, whatever. So, hey, today we're talking to Callaway Club's director of custom fitting and player performance, Michael Vraska. I'm really pumped up to talk to Mike. We've been playing hit and miss for a while with poor Mike. Um, he's on the Pacific Coast uh, time out there, and we're on the East Coast. And yeah, it's just been crazy. So, um, let let's get after it. Mike's already here. Let's let him in. All right. Nice. Oh, oh man, I love this guy. On How you doing, Michael? Hey guys, good uh, good that we could finally have. We have been playing a little uh, online email tag. I'm glad we're actually getting to make this happen. Man. Always willing to talk golf and uh, talk, love talking sports as well. So yeah, looking forward to this. Oh okay. So, How's the weather where you are, my friend? Uh, I live in Carlsbad, so it's somewhere between 68 and 71 uh, wow. only every day of the year. So uh, that's pretty much how it is all the time. Occasionally it gets really hot and it'll get to be 78, or in the winter it'll get really cold and get down to 65, but, you know, we struggle through the pain. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. So, so I, I got my car today. It's 102 or something crazy like that. Yeah. yeah, I I lived in Texas for ten years. I've spent uh, mo in the Dallas area. I spent most wow. of my life around Chicago, but the last uh, five has been weather paradise here in Southern California. So, you go out and play golf every morning before it gets uh, too hot for you, like seventy four or seventy five. <laughs> uh, I am uh, I am I love golf. Obviously, it's been uh, a big part of my life. It's paid for my kids' college and houses and cars and all that stuff. It's literally my right. job. But I am a weekend warrior. I play pretty much every Saturday, and I mean that. I play every Saturday. I'll play a little on vacation. So I'm a fifty to sixty round a year guy. Um, one day when I retire, I'd like to make it three thousand rounds a year. But uh, we got to work a few more years to be able to. Hey, play. I'm a fifty to sixty round guy too, and I only went out like five times last year. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i shoot <laughs> so i mean let me ask you a question because you said you like to talk you do like to talk sports not just golf and you said you you mentioned you said you're in chicago and uh texas who's your favorite team football wise uh i actually uh, i like i love pro sports except for college i, I mean except for football I and mean, i love the bears but i mean i won't i won't necessarily turn on a jags cowboys game Right, right. Um, I love. I, I do watch the Bears uh, pretty much every Sunday when I can. But uh, from football perspective, college football is my passion. I love the pageantry. I love all of that. Right, right. Uh, and everything else is pretty much pro sports, except for okay. Purdue hoops. I'm a Purdue grad, so obviously cheer on the Boilermakers and everything. Yeah. Okay. What, well, uh, Mike? Piece this together for me, then. You went from mechanical engineer mm. to a career in golfing and performance director. How'd that happen? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the really short version of it. So, uh, I, I'm a, like, as you mentioned, I'm a Purdue mechanical engineer, graduated with that. I was actually working in the steel mill uh, in Gary, Indiana. I grew up around Northwest Indiana. Uh, I was working there, and uh, thankfully for me, I got promoted into a job that uh, just wasn't a good fit. Uh, and back then, and it may still be true, you know, steel industry was, it was tough to recruit young people. Um, and people with, you know, and I, that's, that's probably my only skill at that point is I was young and I had a degree, but so I got promoted several times and I got promoted into a job that just wasn't the right fit. And, um, you know, came home, talked to my wife and said, Hey, I just, we got to figure something out. And I literally made a list of things that I was good at. And the list was engineering. Uh, I played some college baseball and coached a little, so baseball, and I was passionate about golf. And so 
this list was pretty short. I was like, well, I, either I keep doing this or I got to find something I'm more passionate about. And, and very gratefully, uh, actually just over 25 years ago, um, I just passed my 25th anniversary in the golf industry. I got my first job there. Um, uh, and then I uh, spent the, so 25 years and the last five here at Callaway. So it was really a, a you know, a promotion. It was great, good money and better benefits and all that stuff. But uh, if you, if you're not, you're not excited to go to work. In fact, uh, I was the opposite of excited to go to work for a little while. It led to a great change in my life. I'm very grateful for that, uh, that weird happening turning out that way. Hmm. So you work with the development and advancement of clubs, custom fitting, player performance. I haven't updated my clubs <laughs> since I graduated high school coming up on 30 years ago 30 years ago okay my father-in-law is an avid was an avid golfer so i go to his place in florida and he has no joke probably like 200 clubs down there so i just use whatever he has and and, and i love it because i just pick and select a la carte however what are some advancements new enhancements the overall golf experience for uh for players yeah so i spent the first 18 years of my career in club design and, and golf ball design so uh, i've got a lot of background on that again the last five i've really been focused on this custom fitting and player performance so um you know the, the the technology has advanced tremendously i look at you know the the way we designed clubs 25 years ago when when i got in the space uh, you know, we had really smart people. We do our best to test things. We go and put it in the CAD and, and we we make a sample of it. And, you know, three to six months later, we'd get that sample back and then we'd test it and find out if it was good or not. Uh, you know, fast forward to today and we are using really advanced um, analytics tools, much more data driven. You'll hear, you know, not that we need to get into product specific, but you'll hear AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning through every aspect of, of what we do now. Uh, our ability to test things digitally, meaning you know, we've tested enough physical products to understand their, their properties, their mass properties, the durability, sound, um, that we can predict what those things are going to be like. And we can run through literally tens of thousands of iterations in a matter of a week. So wow. when we get those, pro and then we can prototype significantly faster, what used to take you know, 90 days at best and sometimes six months, we can knock out in 30 days. So our cycle time is just so much faster and we're not guessing anymore, right? They're, they're, we do get surprised every once in a while, but those surprises are much fewer and far between. We're able to look at finer details in products, uh, internal weighting, things that affect vibrations and sound and, and minuscule performance way faster than we've ever been able to do. So, um, you know, if you haven't updated in clubs in 30 years, I really <laughs> like your chances to, to be an advancement. But in all seriousness, you know, we preach to go get fit, go get fit for the clubs that are right for you, but bring your current clubs, you know, and, and test them side by side and you'll find out how much better they are. Right. You I mean, they were graphite. So I was like, Oh, I got graphite shafts. I thought that sounded really good, you know? Right. So maybe yeah. I do need to get updated. <laughs> that was really good and could still be really good. Right. Yeah. But put it to the test. Yeah, you're right. Hey, um, who are some of the notable professional golfers that are using Callaway clubs these days? And do you think that the usage of the clubs is, uh, helps their performance? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got a huge list on our website. I'm going from memory here, but Yuka Sasso just won, uh, you know, the U.S. Women's Open. Uh, you know, Akshay Batia has been on fire. The young lefty we have, uh, Sam Burns, Xander Shoffley just won his first major, got that done. Rose Zhang has been, you know, really taking the LPGA by storm. Um Ronnie Yin uh, has won a couple of majors on the LPGA Tour. We've got so many up and comers on the DP World Tour and our Callaway Next program. I mean, I, I, it's close to 100, and I'm going to fail that test if you have to ask me to name wow. 100. Um, but yeah, we, we, we work with them. We help them analyze data. We help work with their teams. You know, so many of them have a physio and obviously a coach and maybe a putting coach. Uh, and we work with them, with our tour team. Um, to get products that will make their games better and, and very unique. You know, tour players, um, because they are so precise, uh, they're, they're better than everyone who's on this call now and listening to this call, uh, can do things with a golf ball that is, is sometimes tough to believe unless you're standing there watching it from a repeatability, from a consistency standpoint. So, you know, when we work with them, we're trying to shave off literally fractions of a stroke, right? I mean, their, their average might be, 
69.4. You know, we're trying to get him down to 69.35. Uh, when somebody like T. Sizzle there, when we go to fit him, if his clubs are 30 years old, we might literally be, and I'm not exaggerating, we might be able to shave five or six shots off of his game. Uh, we can't do that for a tour player. They're too good. They're already fit, right? So we're looking for those those edge cases that we can help them both from a, from a data, decision-making, and product to really get them dialed in. Five or six shots. I don't do that until after I'm done playing. <laughs> I can't help you with that. I'm more of the during guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> those kinds of shots. Got you, Michael. <laughs> oh, he's something else, Mike. Uh, it, oh, I show up. You're there. We talk. I say, hey, Mike, I need a set of clubs. What's the process for you to measure me up to get me a, a set of clubs that's going to work for me? Well, I love the way you phrase that. that you show up and, and we talk, right? Because we, we view the pre, what we call the pre fit interview, typically the part where you're getting warmed up, where you're just raking balls and getting your body loose, right? Yeah. Uh, we have some critical questions that we ask, uh, and it can vary a little bit by, by skill level, um, by experience, what you're getting fit for. But we call that the pre-fit interview. And that's going to set the expectations for you and the fitter, right? Maybe you hit the ball a long way and, you know, hitting it farther isn't going to help you. But, you know, hitting two more fairways, hitting two more greens, that's what you really need. Or maybe it's somebody like, hey, you know what? I haven't missed a fairway since the Reagan administration, but I can't hit it out of my shadow, right? Let, let's get you some distance. What do we need to do from that? Or, or maybe it's a short game thing, right? So, so setting that up, and understanding where you've been, where you want to go, and what your clubs are doing good, right? Because you're yep. playing now, there's got to be something good in your clubs. What yep. are they not doing? So we're going to have that pre-fit interview, and then we're going to get you on the launch monitor. We're going to have you hit shots, and we're going to look at ball speed, launch angle, spin rate, descent angle, consistency, shot dispersion. We're going to look at all different data and then you know start making recommendations. Hey, try this. You know, maybe you've got a right miss. We've got some things to, to help you go back to the left. Now, a good club fitting is not going to replace, and it is not a lesson, right? So, you know, if, if you still need to get better, that, that's on you. But when you come to a fitting, we're going to take all the tools that you bring, all your physical abilities. Mm -hmm. We're going to maximize those. And the parts that you struggle with, we're going to do our best to minimize those. So that's really what, you know, from a fitting perspective, we're trying to do. We're trying to make you the best golfer you are right now. Now, you might say, you know, Mark, you know, if you're being fit, like, hey, I'm taking lessons, uh, you know, I'm going to the gym for the first time in a couple of years. We can factor that in as well, right? We can look, of, of, you know, a couple months, a year ahead even, and make sure that what you're getting fit in today is still going to be good for the for the near future as well. So, Mike, how often should I, um, say, update my clubs then? Like, you know, yeah, like, that's, like, a, that's a question we get all the time. And uh, I'm going to answer this. There is, there's no right answer, but it's kind of what I talked with T. Sizzle about. Take, you, you know, if you see something, oh, a new driver came out. I, I, that looks really interesting to me. It sounds like it's something that may work for me. Take your current driver, go get fit. And in that pre fit interview, tell the fitter, hey, I've got this driver now. I'm really interested in this new one. Show me, don't just tell me, but show me, is this one better for me? Right. And if the answer is yes, then you have to make a decision, you know, is, is, is that game, is that yardage game, is that consistency game, um, is that worth the money that we're charging, right? If it doesn't beat it, guess what? No good fitter is going to say buy this if it's not better. So, uh, you know, I always tell people, you know, drivers, um, drivers change quickly. So, you know, if you get much out of two, three years from a driver in a fairway wood, it's definitely time to go look, uh, you know, irons. Again, you can look every year. Technology continues to advance. That AI, that machine learning really is driving things. Um, and you certainly want to go to, again, every two, three, four years at most, or, or you are losing out on technology. That's interesting because um, it's it's amazing to me how much AI is driving so much of our society today already. You know, I, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, Terry and I are both teachers. Um, and, you know, one of the things we have to to monitor closely is the kids using AI to do all their assignments right. anymore. Like, but that's a great thing that you're using it for in the golf industry. You know, like exactly. that, that, that's, that's, that's what that's it should have been created for. How to use it. That's, and that's what we ought to equip our students with, but how you just went from 90 days to 30 days and being able to make those um, right. recommendations is incredible. Yeah. It, well, 
Yeah, one key difference with our AI, right, is we have to develop it all. There, you know, some people they hear me say I, and we don't have a big red button in the middle of our building that does right. easy on it, and you press it, and a golf club shoots out. So uh, we do use the the AI technology, the machine learning, but all of that input, it, you know, we still have to run the right tests, right? We have to input the right data, <laughs> for machine learning to factor in. We have to know what a failure mode is. We have to know what and define what success is. What is a good sounding driver, right? We have to put that real world data in to that machine learning for that. It then to iterate literally tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of mm. times to walk oh. in. So we are big fans of AI, but we're really, we're, you know, we say we're cutting edge, we're creating our own because we have to. There, there is yeah. no Microsoft designing golf clubs. There is no Google designing golf clubs. That's us. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, kind of, go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry, sis. I was going to say, speaking of the success stories, Michael, uh, any, any that come to mind that, in, you know, whether it's a pro or an amateur like us that significantly improved their game. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's funny you mentioned that. So I've got a good friend. Uh, he's actually a college professor, uh, lives in Utah, good dear friend. And, uh, you know, has, has gotten really serious about golf. He's a decent player. Um, and, uh, well, he came up to, down to Callaway, uh, helped him get fit about, uh, right around two months ago now. And last week, and you know, we're friends. So I get the text updates. I played this weekend. I did this, I did that. Uh, but I got a text last week, a, a really gracious. Thank you. Text. He has shaved one and a half shots off of his handicap. So wow. he's taken roughly a third of his handicap. He was a four to five handicap. Just by, and this is a guy who's again a good player, but he hadn't been fit before. Everything was buying off the shelf, or you know, maybe he hit, hit his buddy's driver for two holes and then he'd go buy that. Um, but to get fit and, and, to, and to really set up his whole bag and understand, he used to have two clubs that went the same distance, you know, they were really the same thing and, and they weren't doing him a whole lot of good. So, not only to get him the, to, to get him individually the right clubs, but to get the full 14 clubs in his bag that would maximize his performance to understand the course he plays most often, the shots he likes to play, quite frankly, the shots he likes to avoid. So, um, you know, and, and you also look at our tour success this year. You know, again, we mentioned the number of majors we've had. Uh, again, th those tour players are elite players, but without the right tools, and especially golf ball, you know, one of the things that, the, that, that not enough people get fit for is their golf ball. It is the one, you know, it's the one tool, if you will, that you use for every shot, right? You're using it off the tee. You're using it on the green. You're using it around the green. So, Right. Uh, Chrome Tour and Chrome Tour S X success on tour this year, and, and getting those players into those balls has been it, it's been outstanding. Hey, do the professional golfers uh, often have different sets or clubs that are tailored for specific courses or playing conditions? Uh, that's a great question. This week, so the answer is generally no. They generally have you know if you're allowed 14 clubs. They generally have 14 clubs or maybe a 15th club. Uh, but this is this. Uh, I don't know when this is going to drop, so forgive me. But we're recording this the week of the Open Championship at Royal Troon. So this week, because the course conditions are so different with Lynx Golf, it's much firmer. The fairways are much tighter. So specifically, this is a week that you will see players switch a club or two or even three out. Um, you'll see more uh, driving irons, if you will, utility irons. You'll see a few less seven and nine woods just because they get up in the air and the wind can blow them. So, you know, if you look at kind of the average 50 week a year, there, there's not a ton of change, you know, they'll, they'll swap out wedges, but usually it's the same wedges to get fresh grooves a couple times a year. Um, but you know, they're, they're much more of, Hey, I'm going to get the perfect 14 clubs or again, maybe 15th, maybe they're swapping out a three iron and a five wood or a two iron and a five wood. Uh, but again, this week, open championship specifically, you'll see more of that than, than, than ever before, and, and then they'll go right back to their standard set in a week or two. They got to have some different clubs they play when they hit the British Open, though, right, Mike? Yeah, they they'll look at uh, they'll look at some lower bounce again because the turf is so tight, it is so firm, it's sand based. Uh, any of you who've been able to play, even you know, even some U.S. type link style golf course, maybe out of Bandon or down in Florida, there's some. You know, you really have to be precise with your contact, um, you know, bounce, you know, bounces your friend generally, but you get on those really firm, sandy and bounce isn't quite your friend at that if for some of those courses. So, yeah, there will be some loft, excuse me, some uh, grind and, and bounce changes on wedges. 
Uh, and again, kind of that, that secondary off the tee, the a driving iron, utility iron, long irons, you'll see some changes there and some players' bags as well. Hey, Mike, I know we talked a little bit about how uh, you measure up the person when you're getting some clubs made, measure up the athlete. Um, is there any data or analytics that helps support uh, the types of clubs you guys are making, uh, the new developments, things like that? Yeah, and we test clubs extensively. Uh, we, we test with robots, but we do a ton of player testing, right? And a lot of that comes out uh, in our marketing claims. Uh, you know, we do some other things. Um, but really, again, I hate to, to keep pushing back on this. We want to see how it performs for you, you know, and you being whoever it, that person is in front of us getting fit. So, you know, you, you kind of have to trust us that we've done all the work, and then you have to make us prove it, right? Get in the hitting bay, get on the tee. Um, you know, get on a launch monitor with a qualified fitter, and, and you can see the numbers for yourself. Is it going farther? Is it spinning more or less, depending on what you need? Is it launching higher or lower, depending on what you need? So, yeah, we, we do a ton of testing. It, it's obviously proprietary, right? I mean, that, that's uh, those are our secret codes, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we test extensively. We have, uh, <clears throat> it's a couple blocks from headquarters called the Ely Cowboy Performance Center. Uh, we do a lot of high-end fitting there. We do work with our tour players, but its main purpose is product testing. And uh, we are testing not quite 24-7, but uh, you might be surprised at how close we get to 24-7 during peak times. So do we got to come to Carlsbad to take these tests? What? Absolutely not. Uh, we, fit, uh, we fit all over the country. Now, from a <laughs> test panel, we, we do do some testing, but a majority of it's here. Uh, but, yeah, we fit all over the country. We have about 600 uh, Callaway fitters. Plus, uh, we have you know partners: PJ Tour Superstore, Golf Galaxy, Dick Sporting Goods, Worldwide Golf, countless club professionals um, that uh, that we partner with and make sure they have the right fitting tools and training to fit our clubs as well. Oh wow! Here, here's a kind of off balance question, Mike. If if I'm hitting Callaways, do I need to hit a special ball? Do I do I need to pick? Let me yeah, Callaway this. ball. Well, uh, yeah, is your ball designed for the club, like Callaway balls? So the answer to that is well, one, we do want you to play our, our golf ball. So I want to be clear on that. But no, there, you know, if if you're if heaven forbid you play one of our competitors' brands of irons or driver, you can certainly use our golf ball and vice versa. Uh, you know, but and again, I we really recommend that players get fit for their golf ball. Uh, for too many years, players have seen what's been used on tour. And they play that golf ball. Now, again, that is a good golf ball. I'm not saying it's not, but it might and probably isn't the right ball for you. So, you know, ball fitting has really advanced in about the last four or five years. You know, it was really hard to find a place to get fit for a golf ball. Technology wasn't quite where we all wanted it to be, but there yeah. are some really great opportunities to get fit for a golf ball. Uh, and you're going to see big changes there, uh, especially around the greens, especially on iron performance. So, um, you know, again, I, I hate to say it, but take, you know, your next fitting, ask about the golf ball. Your fitter will be happy to have you hit a few shots, to understand your spin profile, to get your speeds right, understand the shots you want to play around the green. There's big differences on that 40-yard wedge shot. There's big differences on a seven iron uh, between a tour uh, urethane ball and a two-piece Serlin or Ionomer type golf ball. Big spin differences. So these are probably dirty words in the office. Titleist, top flight, ping, right? You don't say those words in the office. But uh, we, we, try us, to, we, huh? try to, we try to avoid those words. Yeah. <laughs> what are some differences between Callaway's technology and these other competitors? Yeah. So, so you know, there, there are, you know, certainly there, there's a number of, of good competitive products that we're always battling, right? And, and you know, I think our market share. Uh, speaks for itself. You know, we've been number one in a number of categories. Uh, we're number two. We're a strong number two in golf ball. You know, that's really changed the last couple of years, but there was a prominent number one. Everybody knows who that is. And then, you know, two, three, four, and five would, you know, kind of get mixed up. But, you know, Callaway is a clear number two and gaining great momentum on golf ball. So, uh, you know, again, we, we have, we have theories, we have beliefs. Uh, we believe we believe we have the largest uh, R&D group in all of golf. Uh, we're a publicly traded company. Uh, Cal Top Golf Callaway brands is public publicly traded. So, you know, I can't disclose too much on that. But if you want to go read our 10K and, uh, you know, you can find out some of those things. So, you know, one, 
we believe product matters. We believe that product is the key. Um, you know, so if we, if we put it out there, we're putting it out there with, with full confidence for our D team, from our testing team, from our fitting team, that when you go into a hitting bay or you go onto that uh, practice tee, that our products will perform. And we want you to test it against others. We want to make this a win. Um, you know, obviously it's great if you go in, you know, go into Golf Galaxy and, and, and buy one of our drivers. We like that. Don't get me wrong, but we like it better when you go into their hitting bay at PGA Tour Super. And Super you got me fired up. I want to get new clubs, Michael. Take the word. I can help with that. Oh, there you go. Hey, Mike, how do you ensure that amateur golfers receive the same level of customization and performance benefits from Callaway clubs as professional players? Or is that – are they separate? Or Yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to get – I'm going to be very honest and forth right here. You know, we have more time to work with a tour player, right? We're, we're working with them over, right. over weeks and, and, and literally years. So, um, But from a macro level, you know, we're looking at the exact same parameters. We're asking very similar questions – from you know a 15 handicap who walks in and Xander Shoffley. We're asking what type of shots they want to hit, what type of shots they're struggling with. We put them on our launch monitor. We're looking at those launch and spin uh, head delivery characteristics. So um, you know there it's a little more transactional, right? Because we're going to fit you today, we're going to send you clubs, and it's up to you as a consumer to come back to us. Uh, you know we're working on ways to make that even more conversational as time goes on. Um, so. Again, I'm not saying you get the exact same level because we see tour players. We have we have guys on tour literally every week or work with them. So, yeah. but from a macro level, the technology, the products, the uh, ability to judge performance is is on par with one another. It's just really how often we get to see them. Yeah. Nice. I got one more question for you, my friend. Then you can bet that beautiful weather you're you're enjoying out there. Um, looking ahead golf industry what can we expect to see in the future of callaway clubs for for custom fitting player performance you know what are some upcoming innovations you've got going on or developments that well that you can share i i know you're probably not yeah, we don't need patent numbers, numbers but just yeah so uh, i mean good timing we uh, just launched our uh, opus wedges today we've had tremendous success they've already got a couple tour wins so if anyone wants to go to callawaygolf.com they can see our opus and opus platinum wedges and happen to coincide with them. Here's one thing I can talk about. We have a brand new wedge fitting app that's going to go with them. So go see your fitter, ask about that wedge fitting app. We have new uh, wedge and iron fitting tools coming out. Where we're going to be able to dial in loft and lie. Like, like we, we've done a great job, but like never before, we really think it's going to be best in class. So uh, good timing on this call. I know we've, uh, we played phone tag, but it actually has worked out great where I can talk about some things where even last week I wouldn't have been able to. So, uh, go check out Opus Wedges. Ask about the fitting app. Ask about new tools. Uh, we're uh, we're gonna get you dialed in. Those are beautiful. beautiful. Appreciate all your time, all the information you shared. Just a a great wealth of uh, of new knowledge. It's it makes me more fired up to go get some new clubs too. My clubs yeah. are probably <laughs> seven or eight, maybe ten years old as well. I'm not thirty like Sizz's, but. Um, anything that can improve my swing. <laughs> my son actually started playing golf. Uh, a couple months ago, and I signed him up for um, a youth a youth program that they have. They pay twenty bucks, and they can play all these courses where we live in Maryland for five bucks. So wow. he, he really enjoys the sport. Yeah. Now I know something that can improve the game, but I got to get the professional's opinion here, Michael. Do you believe in the mulligan? Uh, I, I really, if, if you enjoy, if you play golf more than the mulligan, I have no problem with that. I mean, <laughs> play golf how you want to play. Oh man, everyone mulligan. That's my. You only get one. <laughs> you need a mulligan to hold, don't you? I say got a mulligan every other shot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael, thank you so much for your time. I uh, really appreciate it, and uh, you take care out there in California. Keep pumping out that great product and and getting yes. those guys fitted with Callaway clubs and get them swinging those balls. So you guys rise to the to the top, number one. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. Nice Take to meet care. you. Thank you. Pretty, pretty interesting. Guys. Yeah, that was pretty some interesting. Cool stuff, guys. Yeah. yeah. This is going to get some clubs. I'm about to. I, I tell you what, he really – I'm. I was, he thought I was joking. He he did really turn me on to uh, thinking about, okay, it might – well, 
you know, probably 75% me, 25% them oldies that I got in the, in the, in the back of the trunk. But I got I to gotta upgrade. I got to get something new. <clears throat> yeah, with, with Vincent. I'm talking uh, about the clubs, honey. What? Uh, <laughs> uh, with Vincent getting interested in it, I, I never turn him away from from being interested in a sport. So you know, right. I'll start swinging my clubs again, and hopefully, Should. I swing them better than I did before I moved to Maryland twenty six years ago. Um, I played pretty rarely back home. Like uh, there were a bunch of different courses I would go hit, whether it was Lenape, Vanagre, you know, whatever. Uh, and I I wasn't great. But I was, you know, better than I am right now. That's for sure. Yeah. I've got. I'll be honest with you. I've gotten hooked on disc golf recently, and uh, man, I enjoy that. That that's just so fun. It's it's a great workout, and um, I don't get frustrated with it. That's the important thing. It's all in the core, baby. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, just a shout out to our uh, one of our fellow podcasters out there. He's got one of the best golf podcasts out there. Uh, Chris Mascaro, um, Off the Tee, I believe is the name of his podcast. Uh, he's always in the top dogs when it comes to sports podcasts and especially golf. He's the one who gave us Michael as a lead. He said you will thoroughly enjoy having a conversation with him. And, and I just want to give Chris a shout out for doing that for us. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do the social media stuff. Go ahead, Sheen. Rasheen Hill Facebook, Rasheen Hill Instagram, Rasheen Hill TikTok. There's this new thing. I, I, we talked about this last year, threads. Somehow I'm hooked on that. I don't know how uh, I get in there. I think you automatically go there from, from, from Instagram. X. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. A lot of stuff's I'm clickbait not... on that, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was talking about Travis Kelsey. I was like, and then the next thing you know, yeah, that's a lot of clickbait on the threads. Okay. Well, South but I, I don't know how I get hooked up with this stuff either. I'm on I'm on Facebook, X, and Instagram. One T Youngie. One T Youngie. Hey, our boy Big Chops couldn't make it tonight. He's at a family reunion. He's got like 16 Uncle Juniors Uncle showing up. Junior. Hey, he told Johnson, us. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be off the chain all week for him. He's already Monday. been to something. You know, I, I, I know the families. Is that a week long family reunion? Like I, it's it? Monday. I'm lost. What they been doing? Yeah. Said, I thought he was on his way back to Atlanta. He's still on the griff. Yeah. He's <laughs> enjoying yeah, himself. I, I guess he's enjoying himself. I don't know. Uh, he, uh, he's uh. he's a little disappointed with going back to the hometown and seeing the way it's it's kind yeah. of rolled out these days. But hey, I would have gone off to be an honorary Johnson. Question was that so that was that like a stills place also because that's on the water also right? oh yeah, yeah absolutely we had two foundries and one steel mill uh right on the Kiski Minitus River wow and the Kiski Minitus River used to be uh in the Guinness Book of World Records is the fastest flowing river in the world wow yeah forever that, it was like that that, forever. That, that collapsed like when they all collapsed like you know like in pretty, Keysport yeah Claire pretty Turner much and, yeah. yeah they well, also have um. Uh, a place yeah, called yeah, Numec up there, which was uh, a nuclear plant. Oh, wow. Numec. Uh, it's in Apollo, Pennsylvania. And one of the things about Numec is uh, a lot of the people that worked there ended up coming up with cancer. Yeah. A lot of the people who lived in the local area there, uh, like near that river in Apollo, had cancer. So, um, you know, they never had to answer the bell for it because they went out of business. But Right. You know, uh, there was a lot of speculation. Now that river is uh, fished and kayaked and an alligator was released in it. And it was swimming around there for a while till they caught it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy. But you can find Michael Chops Mills at The Real Big Chops. He's on Instagram. He's on TikTok. I think he goes by his government on... His uh, government name. He, yeah, he yeah. always... Government, I'll leave that he, out. Yes. He goes by his government on Facebook, Michael Gregory Mills. So, hey, connect with us here on the Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday and the Barbershop Crew by checking out our Facebook pages, our Twitter, our Snapchat. All of those are OSP with Eminem. Check out our website, uh, podpage.com, Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday. And you can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And those are all original sports podcasts. Uh, a shout out to our networks. Let's talk sports network, sideline sports net, 
uh, Elite Sports and Entertainment Network, as well as Manning Media and Peak One Sports. We've we've stretched this out, fellas. We're we're reaching across uh, across big. the country now. It's stretching yeah. out faster Getting than my big. waistline. Yeah. If you missed any parts of this show and you don't want to watch it on YouTube, you can check us out on Roku every Tuesday night from 9 to 10. Uh, feel free to let us know if you have any comments, questions. If you have somebody you think will be a great guest for the OSP, hit us up. Please email us at originalsportspodcast at gmail.com. Shout out to Steve Medley for the voice intro. Steve uh, shout, shout out to Charlie Hodgson for all the music he's done. Join us next week to experience the O on the original. What you got? Before we go, before we go, today is my youngest daughter's 16th birthday. Happy birthday, Mariah. Love you. Happy birthday. And we're going to go hit that road tomorrow to Savannah, baby. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Yeah. happy birthday. 16. Holy cow. Is she a sophomore this year? She'll be a junior. A junior? Legal for Max. I'll tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's her Instagram? I go tell Matt. <laughs> oh shoot! Yosemite hey. Sam, baby, Yosemite. <laughs> Safe travels. Safe travels to Savannah. We'll see I'm you, Huckleberry. We'll see everybody next week on the OSC right. with the BSC.